The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Well, Ohio licensed private investigator Susan Daniels is also on this case, and she's not stopping either. I've asked her to come back on the program, and we're going to review the facts that she has uncovered as a licensed private investigator, licensed by the state, if she makes false allegations of criminal activity against a citizen, she would lose her license, she would lose her livelihood, and she could possibly be prosecuted for using databases that are only accessible to people in law enforcement agencies because she is a licensed private investigator, she would face prosecution, I believe, if she falsely used those private databases to make false accusations against a private citizen, especially against the President of the United States. So I don't believe this woman is going to risk her career, her reputation, her livelihood, even going to jail. I think she's found something, and I've asked her to come back on the program, and we're going to stay on top of this thing until some men and women in Washington find some some calcium in their back instead of jello and get the courage to demand an independent prosecutor bring Barack Obama in and swear him in under oath to tell the truth about his identity. Susan Daniels, welcome back to True News. Oh, hi, Rick, and thank you for having me back. Well, I think you can tell I'm a little fired up about it today. Oh, good. Somebody needs Well, we need to be on top of this thing, Susan, uh, because officialdom in Washington refuses to do its responsibility. The media refuses to do its responsibility. I believe the media is in on it. I believe they're covering up for this guy. And um, the scary thing is I I, I think there are people, well, I've actually talked to citizens when I've talked to them privately and told them things that you have found and others, and they've just shrugged their shoulders and said, well, what are we going to do about it? He's he's our president. Um, I guess that's what we've got. And I'm like, are you serious? You're willing to accept an imposter, a criminal, you're, you, because he was put in there and you don't know what to do about it? This is really serious, Susan. This has never happened in the history of the republic, no. that a man has been in the White House that a sizable portion of the American people have serious questions about his identity and his past. Oh, you're absolutely right. And what people ought to be doing is they ought to be calling their congressman and telling them, you either start looking into this guy or you're not going to get my vote ever again or the votes of my family, my friends, my neighbors. Because that's what they most fear is losing their position in the government. I agree. Well, let's talk about the things that you have found as a licensed private investigator. And uh, we'll point out, as you have in the past, that, that private investigators have access to to certain databases that the general public cannot access. That's correct. And you have to use it with great care because you are licensed by the state. Right. And so you just can't uh, go digging into people's private lives without oh, no. a reason, and you can't make public accusations against people without being able to back up well, what you've I, said. I'd be crazy if I did. That's and right. I, as I've said before, I mean, why would anybody make al- allegations against the President of the United States if you can't back up with documents what you're saying? All right. Is this number 42 2-5. Again, it's 042-684425. Is that the Social Security number used by Barack Hussein Obama? Yes. Is it his real Social Security number? I don't believe so. Why? Well, because he was working as a kid in Hawaii at a, at a Baskin and Robbins store, and he would have had to have a Social Security number from there to work there. How do you know that 0426844425 was not issued to him in Hawaii? Because it's a it's a number that was set aside for the residents of Connecticut. All numbers for residents of Connecticut go from 040 to 049. 
Is it possible there was some type of glitch on the day young Barry Satoro, Barack Hussein Obama, filled out his Social Security application and sent it in? Could there have been a glitch? No, and I'll tell you why. Because, uh, and it's still on the Social Security website, it said if you are over the age of 12 and have never had a Social Security number, you must appear in person. You have to appear, appear in person. Correct. And what was his age when he applied? Uh, he, uh, he, he got this Social Security number allegedly in March of 77, and he would have been 15 years old. And so do we have record that he applied in person anywhere? No. We don't know. Nope. Okay, but he was working as a... a counter clerk or yeah, in the something. kitchen of, of, of Baskin Robbins ice cream. It's, well, that's, that's part of his, his That's the story. story. That's the story. Yep. But, but is there anyone in the world that remembers working with young Barack Obama oh, making ice cream I've cones? Seen, not, you know, I, I have never seen that. I mean, it's certainly possible, but, but, you but know, you, whether he worked there or not, there is no reason when his half-sister... Uh, Maya has a um, Hawaiian social security number. Why doesn't he? His half-sister, older or younger than him? She's, uh, I think she's about six years younger. Than okay, but she has a, a Hawaiian social security number. Correct. You know, I, I've often thought, and I've, I've brought this up since uh, 2008, that no one comes forward to say, I was Barack Obama's friend in school. I played on the playground with him. I played baseball with him. I played basketball with him. I went to the movies with him. No young ladies say, I was in love with him. I had a crush on him. He, you know, Where are these people? Well, there's people that have come forward that went to Punahou with him. And they called him Barry. Right. And, um, uh, and in Occidental, while he was there, uh, I understand he, he was thrown out of there. You know, they like to pretend that he graduated from there, but I don't think that's the truth. I believe he was thrown out. We don't know, do we? No. No, because nobody, nobody's talking. No diploma. Uh, not that I've ever seen. No, congr- uh, no, uh, no college records. Well, I, I, the one that's really staggering to me is Columbia, where people who were supposedly in the same grade, majoring in the same thing, not a single person was ever found uh, that, kn- that knew him. I know. I know. I and think George Stephanopoulos talked about that, that they had interviewed 400 people from Columbia that were there at the same time, and not a single one of them knew him. I don't think he ever went to Columbia. And, and look at when, when he brought out the, um, the fake birth certificate last month, you know, the, oh, the, the digital image, um, the family of the doctor whose name appeared on the birth certificate, they said, wow, we didn't know our dad delivered the president of the United States. He never told us. Of course, the doctor is dead. Conveniently, he's dead. Right. So we can't ask the doctor about the day he held little baby Barry in his arms and and wiped his little face. Well, and the thing is, there was at one point earlier on, uh, I mean, this it was a Dr. Sinclair that was on this one, but in the past, there were stories about somebody named Dr. West was the one who was supposed to have delivered him. Well, I guess it was such a big occasion, they brought several doctors in that day. They were delivering the anointed one. <laughs> well, the thing that gets me is uh, he, on there, it claims he was born at Capilani. Um, I can't imagine why that hospital wouldn't have an enormous plaque bragging about the fact that the president of the United States was born there. Yeah, you would think that the that the in the maternity ward, the room that Ann Dunham laid on the bed and and little baby Obama was there in the cradle. You would yeah. think that would be a a a, a federal uh, shrine right now. Oh, I mean, it, talk about a, a a dream marketing scheme. You know, the the president was born here. They don't know. Nobody will actually come out and say he was born here. Well, 
and that's that's not only that at one point somebody had offered a hundred thousand dollars to anybody that would come forward from the hospital a nurse a, you know a janitor another patient that would come out and say you know give information about it not a single person stepped forward Kabbalani hospital neither confirms nor denies right. that obama was born there they're simply silent right so when somebody takes the fifth amendment <laughs> Because that's basically what they're doing here. They're just right. saying we're, no comment. Raises lots of questions. Because why, you can't pro- you not? can't prosecute them because they have not made a statement. That's right. They simply are letting other people make the statement. Right. That's but, exactly right. Very fishy. I'm going to read this a num- this number again, and and, and for the FBI and um, Homeland Security and the, the immigration office and, and everybody else i i hope you're listening write this down fbi 0426844425 social security administration uh i hope somebody from the social security administration washington's listening run this uh, number through your system 0426844425 and tell us if this is a legitimate Social Security number issued to a young boy in Hawaii named Barack Hussein Obama. I'd like someone from Homeland Security, the FBI, the NSA, the CIA, uh, somebody call us and say, Rick, uh, get off of it. Uh, Look, that's the president's real Social Security number. You shouldn't be reading it on the radio. I'm going to continue reading it on the radio until the moon turns to to blue cheese. This guy is a crook. Well, I, you know, on March 31st, I sent letters to um, Astro at the uh, Social Security Administration, to Eric Holder, and to several of their minions. And I, and I said that, that somebody needed to, to investigate why he was using a number that, you know, that obviously did not belong to him, that he was, you know, 15 in Hawaii at the time, why does he have a Connecticut Social Security number? I said, you know, it's a fraudulent, and he's using it. And about, oh, probably six weeks later, I got a response from one of them. And it was a very terse letter, and it said, we disagree with your conclusions. Susan, um, now this would be really, this, this would be a lot of fun, be risky. What if I what if I go into our payroll records here at True News? Mm-hmm. Because we have to pay our payroll taxes to yeah. to the IRS. Yeah. Or they'll come and uh confiscate everything. Oh yeah. Uh, even though we're a church, they will come and they'll lock you down. They'll take yeah. everything, all right? What if, what if I change my uh, my legitimate social security number? And, and and I'll just replace it with zero four two six eight four four two five, and I'll start paying my my uh, payroll taxes in my name with that number. What 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 possibly could happen? Uh, well, I'll tell you what that the the number he uses. I have a copy of the first page. Somebody sent it to me of his two thousand and nine tax filing. Mm-hmm. And that's the number that's on it. It, it. it is on his official tax filing. Oh, yeah. Well, what if I use it? Um, well, the, the, the IRS is going to have to come here and do something with me, aren't they? Well, I don't know. I mean, they haven't done anything with him. Why would they bother you? Well, because can you allow... Uh, what if, what if uh, 10,000 Americans started using his Social Security number? Well, I, th- I mean, I'm really, I'm really, pro- I'm serious. I'm proposing that we start doing some aggressive, militant things in this country. I, I, I that's what it's going to take because you can see. I mean, when, when uh, John Boehner became the Speaker of the House, um, I sent to him a letter with documents. I got, I sent to Daryl Issa in California, Derek Canner, to my own congressman. Never heard a word back from any of them, even though they had made all these promises about all these things they were going to do. Oh, they won't touch it. Not no. Off limits. Not Off no. limits, Susan. That's right. They're either in on it or they're scared. They know 
the power that put him there, and they're not exactly going right. to they challenge it. They understand the power that put him there. Okay, now you sent me some documents, and I've got them here in my hands. These are official documents uh, that you ran as a private investigator. Right. Uh, the one is the Social Security number. Uh, can I say the, the database, the uh, verifier? Is that okay? Oh, yeah, because that's, it, it's, just a, it's just a Social Security verifier. That's not, uh, the, number, that's not the name. Of the that's database. not the database. All right, I don't want to give out anything. So it says Social Security number verifier plus, and you ran the number 04268-4425. And uh, it says, uh, now this is the actual, I have it in my hands here. This is the actual database uh, printout right. that you had as a private investigator. It says, Years and state issued. Uh, years issued, 1977 to 1979. State issued. Connecticut. Uh, Social Security Death Index. SSN not found in Social Security Death Index. What does that mean? Does it mean um, that the, the person hasn't died? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, now this gets strange because it says names associated with Social Security number. Obama Barack. Obama Barack Hussein. Dates of birth associated with Social Security number, 1890, Mm -hmm. August 4, 1961, and then 4861. So is that a... That's the foreign way of doing it. Yeah, the European. Yes. Yeah, the Europeans would say the right way of doing it. Um, So they have it as 080461 or 040861, but it also says... 1890. Yes. Well, how could it be? How could this number be associated with someone in 1890 and 1961? Um, it could. Well, it couldn't. Uh, the uh, my theory is that this number was originally assigned to somebody that was born in 1980. Um, Social Security did not start until 1936, and it was voluntary, so people did not have to get a Social. Security number. A lot of people never did, uh, including like my grandparents. But what I believe happened is in 1977, when this person would have been 87 years old, that they needed it for medical care. Because I believe it was somebody that could not afford, that got sick, didn't have any kind of medical coverage. And to get it through the government, you would need a social security number. Now, I can pin down the month that that number was assigned, and it was March of 1977. And the reason I can do that is because I have copies of the applications for the people, the one number before his, 4424 and 4429. And the reason I have those is because both those people are deceased. And once you die, there is no expectation of privacy. And both of them got their numbers in March of 77. Okay, so who whose birthday was 1890? I don't know. If, if only I knew that. I've tried for two years to figure out how to find it. Uh, there's no way to. So, so this is somebody that uh, has been dead for quite some time. Right. Um, even if they live to be 100 years old. Right. Um, They've been dead uh, for a number of years. Well, it, it first shows up for Obama in 86. Um, although, as, as you'll look at the documents I sent you, he allegedly, and I don't believe he did, he allegedly signed up for selective service in 1980. But you will see from the other applications for selective service in 1980, his is not the same as theirs. Okay, I mean, I've got, all right, now I have here in front of me uh, online verification selective service record search results. Right. All right, search criteria, last name, Obama, social security number, uh, same thing, the uh, uh, ends with uh, 4425. 4425. Date of birth, 080461, matched record. So you found a matched record. Selective service number of Barack Obama. 61-112553-1. 61-112553-1. Date of registration, 9 4 
correct. Now you ran this. Uh, this is online verification. It's listen. This has got the president. I mean, this has got this the federal seal. Site. This exactly. has got the federal seal on it here. Um, yeah, um, that that is a government site, and uh, but if you try to run Obama's now, it it won't come up. They're hiding it now. Yeah. But you got a copy of it. Yep, I got it before they shut it down. So if we had um, a prosecution, you've got something to enter into the oh, court. Oh yeah, that I, that, that, you know, of all the documents I sent you, they would all, with the exception of that one, they would be considered circumstantial. But but the last one is the one that brings pulls everything together. So the selective service uh, service a uh, selective service agency is now. Hiding, concealing yes. Obama's Selective Service registration, right, which shows his Social Security number ending in four four two five. That's right, and that that is going to turn out to have been the mis- the big mistake they made, because they have permanently tied a Connecticut Social Security number now to his Selective Service number on a federal website on right. a federal database. Right. So that number we now know. It's actually on three different databases. It's on Social oh, it's Security. On, oh, it's on more than Yeah, that. but I mean, it's on Social Security Administration. It's yeah. in the Selective Service, and it's also the IRS. Yes. So if if it's a fraudulent number, uh, he is... Oh, f- he, he has committed so many crimes, I I wouldn't even begin to guess what they are. Okay, um, let's see. I, and you, you, and you, if you look there, I where I ran one of the, his phone numbers that kept coming up with the different addresses. Mm-hmm. Okay, yes. uh, I want to uh, let me ask you before we move off the selective service. I have sure. I have the copies of the actual selective service system um, certificate that's issued. Um, it says. Uh, it, uh, okay, so selective service. All you know, all guys are going to know this thing. Uh, selective service system registration form. Uh, read the Privacy Act statement on reverse. Please print clearly. We all remember doing this one. Yep. Okay, date of birth. August four sixty one. Uh, sex male. Uh, f- print f- full name Obama. Last name first name Barack. Middle name Hussein. Current mailing address, 1617 South, uh, what is it, Baratania? Yeah, something uh, like this. Apartment 1008 Honolulu, Hawaii, 96, looks like 826. Um, permanent residence, same as above. Uh, area code, this is Obama's phone number at the times. Area code 808-949-2317. Oh, uh, now, stop for one second. Okay. Because... It, it, now, what you just read is permanent residency, correct? Yes. And that was 1980 that he was supposed to fill that card out, Yes, right? it says same as above. Uh-huh. Now, but how did he get the um, Social Security number in March of 77? On the 1981, he gives an address as permanent residency. That's right. This thing is dated. 1980 is when he filled out Selective Service. Right. He says his his permanent residence was the 1617 South Baratania yeah. Street, apartment 1008 Honolulu. And that's where he lived when he was going to Punahou, which is where he was in March of 77. Well, maybe he took a vacation uh, that week to Connecticut as a 15-year-old and, and then decided while he was in Connecticut he would apply for a uh, social security number wouldn't that work i don't think so why cuz he'd have to give his his uh, address in connecticut where he was living because if you were on vacation for a week and just decided hey i'm just going to go ahead and get my social security number you would fill out the form with your address right that's if you're on vacation you're gonna, if you're on vacation you don't put your vacation hotel down as the no. address no and how would how would he his family had no money. How would he afford to 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 do that? Now, for a family had no money, they lived in several different countries. Oh yeah, they traveled a lot. Well, didn't Ann Dunham work for the Rockefellers? Uh, she worked for the Ford Foundation. Ford Foundation. Right. 
Yes, she worked for the Ford it's Foundation. The CIA front. Okay. <laughs> what is in the CIA front? Everything's the CIA front. Uh, we can talk about Facebook. Uh, we can talk about all the social networking. We're talking about CIA operations. Okay, now the other one, uh, I've not talked to you about this, uh, that you sent to me. Uh, it was a copy. Uh, first name Bruce. Who was this? I'm not are, sure. are you just showing me what uh, a legitimate one looks like? Oh, yeah. On the same page as Yes. This? Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm showing you what, what, uh, what I want you to look at is the date stamp. Oh, okay. You'll see on the date stamp on the other guys. Yeah. It says 1980. What does it say on his? The other one. Oh, okay. Okay. On the one. Okay, let's look at this one. Um, okay, Obama's Selective Service System registration was uh, signed by Obama August 4th. Excuse me. Um, July 29th, I believe. What was it here? Where is it? Yeah, July 30th. July 30th, 1980, is when Obama signed this Selective Service registration. Now, you sent me another Selective Service registration form from a man in Hawaii. Right. He signed it um, August 2nd, 1980. Right. Two days later. Right. Okay. Now, uh, here's here's what we got here. On the, the date stamp... It's it's turned upside down on Obama's. But well, what it, they've done is they could not find. Uh, I mean that, that that is obviously also fraudulent because yes. what what happened is I mean there should be a second oh, page oh, there that what, has about six or eight more on it. Wait a minute, Susan. Obama signed it July thirtieth, but the date stamp says July twenty nine. Right, and 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 of all the ones I sent you, his is the only one that isn't. Date stamped with the same date. Well, the other right. thing that's the other thing that's, and of course, it, possibly it's missing here. But um, in the year, the nineteen is missing. Right. Whereas in the legitimate one, it clearly says August second, nineteen eighty, and I can read uh, around the the perimeter: Honolulu, Hawaii. Um, what is this? I uh, can't read. Uh, uh, M A. What is this? Uh, can't make sure. Can't make out the second thing. M A something, but this is a U.S. Uh, post post office uh, on Ho- on Obama's date stamp. I can't make out anything other than no. uh, July twenty nine eighty. Yeah, it, what they did is they they made all this stuff up in two thousand and eight, uh, and they couldn't find a nineteen eighty stamp. So what they did is they took a two thousand and eight stamp, cut off the first and the zero, and then turned it upside down and stamped it that way. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Yeah, I I don't know if you, I had thought I had sent you a second sheet that had yeah. had about. Yeah, I do, I have, I, I, yeah, that's now, the next notice, thing. Notice, yeah, I, uh, one, uh, one, two, three, eight of them. Yeah, what, now what is, what's the year on those? Uh, 1980. On every one of them. Every one, July 31st, 1980. Every one of them, and I can every read every, and, and these are reduced. These are reduced on the page because you've got eight of them on the page, right? And I can They're read all different people, and I can read all of the date stamps, right? But Obama's is very difficult to read, and, and it's much bigger. It says eight O only. Eight O. Well, maybe he I was mean, Hawaii. Maybe, they, maybe he's Hawaii eight O. <laughs> I mean. Everything they did, it looks like it was, I mean, all these, these alleged <laughs> things that, that he has, it looks like it was made by kindergartners. What is these guys are, I mean, well, you know what? It, these are amateurs. But it doesn't matter because nobody's going to do anything about it. All right, let, I'm going to move on here. Um, with the Social Security uh, Verifier Plus, uh, Social Security number 04268-4425. Hey, what if we, I may, I may print T-shirts this summer. Oh, with I like it. Obama's, on the front it says Barack Obama's fake Social Security number, 04268-4425. And, and on the back of the T-shirt, I'll put, Demand a federal prosecutor, and we'll do bumper stickers. Sure. 
Uh, wow. I got to get working on this. <laughs> I mean, we got to get this out here. I well, mean, you know, it stuns me because I've worked on this so hard and so long, and I've done, you know, so many things have been written about the work I've done, and I'm stunned that so few people actually know about it. They're not going to talk about it. Yeah, and and the th- but the thing is, I keep thinking everybody knows because. I've done everything I can. Richard Nixon was forced to leave because he sent a couple burglars over to break into the Democratic Party headquarters. Oh, yeah. And that's nothing compared to this. We had a constitutional crisis. The Washington Post stayed on it endlessly until he resigned. Yep. There were were impeachment hearings. Yeah. There will be nothing with him because you, 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 at the beginning of the show, you said it all. He is a plant. And he is put in there by powerful people with a lot of money, and he is just the dummy up front. And and these powerful elitists yes. have power over national law enforcement agencies, obviously the FBI, obviously, and the CIA, and Homeland Security, and, and Immigration Service, all of them cower. Yes. In the sight of these global elite. They're cowards. They will not confront them well obviously i mean i susan where are the patriots in the fbi come on fbi come arrest me for giving out the president's social security number come and get me i'm giving out the president's social security number come and get me okay if it's fake it's fake if i'm doing something wrong come and shut me down this is a fake social security number they can't they can't do it anything they i I think that they're in a really interesting position. I expected people to come to my door immediately. I really did. I, and I, But I didn't care. I said, this is not right, and I'm not going to sit quiet. And um, I thought I was going to get in a lot of trouble. Now, they're going to ignore it. They're going to ignore it because if they don't ignore it, they have to explain it. That's right. Okay, this list here, um, addresses used by Barack Obama with his fraudulent social security number 04268-4425. Uh, the famous one, uh, 5046 South Greenwood Avenue, Chicago. Yeah, that's his house. That's his house, but he doesn't own the house. No, he doesn't own the house. And what's really interesting is if you go to, like, Google Maps and you can bring up a picture of the house and you see all these Chicago police cars protecting the house 24 and, hours a day. And Secret Service. Um, now, U.S. I, U.S. I Secret Service. I'm, I'm not sure about the Secret Service, but I, I can guarantee you they're out there somewhere in the bushes. Um, I I don't know that for for a fact. No. But it wouldn't surprise me. But, but but he does have police protection of a house that he doesn't own. Well, it, and what's interesting is, you know, if, if I lived in Chicago, I would be yelling at the top of my lungs about how much money is it costing. To protect a house that he doesn't even own. But who owns it? But he but he does write the taxes off on his income tax. He writes the taxes off? Yeah. Well, he, 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 I, he, I saw him on a video talking about how he'd paid 28000 in taxes. Okay, who year. owns the house, Susan? Uh, I'm not sure. It's in a trust. It's in the name of a trust. Right. And, and his uh, tax accountant is one of the trustees and he i found out is a long time communist activist in chicago that doesn't surprise me in the least all right let's go down some of these i only got a few minutes here um uh 54 50 south east view park one chicago that um, was a condo that was a condo and i believe i i only saw michelle's name on that i think she may have owned it when she met him okay 365 broadway somerville massachusetts that's when he was going to harvard that that was the address where he had all the parking tickets that the like 14 15 of them that got paid all on the same day in 07 oh oh well maybe he got another job at baskin robbins yeah it could be full time yeah, um, 300 Massachusetts Avenue, Washington, D.C. Yeah, I think that that's, um, uh, that might be the Senate building. Yeah, that doesn't sound 
That doesn't sound like a residential. I know no, Massachusetts I that's Avenue. Right. That sounds like a Senate office building. Yeah, I think it is. But but his not his his fraudulent fake criminal social security number zero four two six eight four four two five linked to an official address in Washington D.C. Oh yeah, that's because that's the one he uses. Okay, we we did uh, three sixty five West Broadway. Um, 5450 East View Park, Chicago? Yeah, that again is the condo. Okay, but it says date of birth, 1890. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Historical record, date of birth, 1890. Obama's phone number at the time, area code 773-684-4809. The report date, October 1st, 1994. The person living there, Barack Hussein Obama, born in 1890. Yeah. He looks good. Oh, he's holding up great. Yeah, he really does. You know, Michelle's got him on all that organic vegetables yeah, and fruits. Yeah, worked. It's worked great. Mm-hmm. Um, what else we got here? Um, 54501 Southeast View, uh, Chicago. Uh, date of birth, 1961. Uh, I don't know what that one is. Uh, he's, he's been around. Yeah. And holding up real good for oh, a guy yeah. born in 1890. Yep. No wonder he wanted government health care. <laughs> I mean, you're that old. You'd want to make sure that uh, the government paid your medical bills. What are we going to do here, Susan? Well, we got, I... you know, bro, you know, Pastor Manning, you know, he taught me what a Mac daddy is. I'm just a country boy, white boy from the country. I oh, never, yeah. I never Long heard. Of, myth, I, yeah. I never heard of a Mac daddy. But I know what a Mac Daddy is now. And, and that's I, exactly what he is. And I can put a face on the Mac Daddy. Yep. And I know what we're dealing with now. Uh, we are dealing with, I call him the presidential pimp. This guy is a street hustler. Yes, he is. He always has been. He's a street hustler. And he's he's jive-talked his way to the top. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But uh, I was reading yesterday, though, uh, that he... He has dropped out of favor with college kids because they no longer consider him cool. All the things they thought he was so cool for that made them vote for him. Oh yeah, like he was going to he was going to end the wars. Oh yeah. But he kept Bush as Secretary of Defense, and he started another war. Yes, he did. Well, you know what? That's it's costing a hundred million dollars a day in Libya. His, he is determined to break this country financially, and that's that was a very easy way for him to spend another hundred million a day. That's right, but it's really, Susan. I get I'm out of time on this, but I'll tell you what it's really about. Um, Colonel Gaddafi had decided that he was going to convert the uh, Libyan dinar into a gold back currency he's got 146 tons of gold yep and he was demanding that the u.s pay for oil with gold he didn't want he didn't want any more of the federal reserve notes worthless paper right and and he wanted real gold that's why we're bombing him oh he challenged he challenged he challenged the international banksters because what are you going to do if, if you have to pay gold for oil? He said, you want my oil? I want gold. Well, yeah. now, well, they're bombing him now. They're going to kill him. That's what this is all about. So, And we well, have so much oil of our own that they won't let us drill for. No, but China's drilling off the coast of Florida. Oh, sure they are. Well, he Obama gave, um, what is it, Brazil, Petrobras, $2 billion to drill. Yeah, and but, all that oil is going to go to China. Yeah, but that's connected to George Soros. Of course, because he he is one of the, the one of the principals in Petrobras. And today he told uh, Angela Merkel that the U.S. is going to help bail out Greece. Yeah, I, I saw that. I didn't read the article because the headline so infuriated me. I thought, don't do this to your blood pressure. Wouldn't it be easier and quicker just for Greece go to China? Because we're going to have to go to China, borrow the money from China, and then loan it. I mean, give it to Greece. Why not just go to Greece? I mean, why not yeah, Greece go to China? Middle, yeah, what are we doing in it? Yeah. Well, listen, you stay at it. Uh, don't give up. I, oh, I, I'm not going to. I admire you. Um, private investigator Susan Daniels. Thank you so much, Susan. Oh, thank you, Rick, for having me. I really appreciate it. 
The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide.